Hey traders, want to trade binary options on Derive directly from MT5 with ease? In today's video, I'll show you exactly how to do it using our FRZ Binary Automator EA. With this EA, you have two ways to trade binary options. The first method is manual trading, where you can use the built-in buttons on the chart for quick execution. The second method is automated trading, where the EA connects to a supported indicator and executes trades based on the indicator's signals. If you have an accurate indicator that provides good entry signals, you can use it to automatically enter trades. Plus, our EA includes additional filters to refine your strategy and improve accuracy. The EA works by connecting MT5 to Derive's platform through an API, allowing you to place trades seamlessly. Now, let's go step by step on how to set it up and start trading. First, log in to your Derive account and go to Traders Hub. Select either your real or demo account. Then, navigate to the CFD section and click on MT5 standard. Click on the download link for Windows to get the MT5 installer. Once the download is complete, install MT5 on your computer. After installation, get your demo or real account login details from Deriv. Then, simply log in to your MT5 platform using the credentials provided. Now that we have a working MT5 setup, let's move on to connecting and configuring the FRZ Binary Automator EA for trading. First, you need to download the EA from our site. You will get three files, FRZ Binary Automator file, config file, and FRZ Derive connector file. Copy all the three files and paste them under your MT5 Experts folder within the data folder. Then refresh or restart your MT5. Then you will see our Automator EA is listed under Experts. Then go to Tools on the main menu and select Options. Under Options allow Algo Trading, DLLs, and Web Requests. Then under Web Requests, add the given URL. Now we need to create an App ID and an API token on Derive website, which will be used to connect MT5 to Derive. First, go to Derive API Dashboard with the given URL. Then select Applications and click on Register New Application. Then give it some name and give it all the rights. Then you will see an app is created with an app ID under the chosen name. Make a note of this app ID as we will need it later. Then go to API Tokens and click on Create a New Token. Then provides all the access rights. Then give it a name. Then click on Create Token to generate the token. Now you will be given a token code. Make a note of this token code as we need this as well for connection. Now go back to the MT5 Experts folder where we saved the files. Open the config file and update the app ID and the token code which we previously generated. Then save and close the file. Now, double click on the FRZ Derev connector file to open it. This is the program that connects MT5 to Derive via API, so you need to keep this running all the time. If everything is right, you get a message that the connection was successful. Then you can load the EA to the chart you want to trade binary options. Let's load it to the Volatility 10 Index. Make sure you select a chart where binary options are available. Now we are all set to start trading. Before that, let's have a look at the settings. Under the first setting, you get to choose the type of trading. There are three types, buffer-based indicator mode, object-based indicator mode, and the manual mode where you can manually enter trades using the buttons given on screen. Then you get the settings required for buffer-based indicator mode. Here, you simply need to add your indicator name without extension, its buffer or color IDs for buy and sell, and the candle ID to watch for the buffer signal. Please note that under this mode, you can use only the default settings of the indicator unless you have the source code for the indicator. 
If you have the source code, then you can change the settings and then generate the X5 file with the custom settings as defaults. Then we have settings for object-based indicators. Here, you will need to have a common prefix for object names. Then you need to identify the respective colors for buy and sell objects. Object time filter settings can be used as defaults in most cases. For detailed instructions, always refer to the user manual. Then you get time filter settings, where you can set a specific time period for trading when you use an indicator to trade automatically. For instance, you can set the EA to work only during London time. When you select a time period, make sure the binary options are available on derive during the set period. Then you get the option value and the expiration settings. First you can set the option value. The minimum supported value is $1. Then you can set the expiration time in minutes. Please note we currently support only the rise and fall options with time-based expiration. You can also set the minimum required payout percentage for the option. Then you get the Martingale option. You can set any Martingale multiplier as you need. Then if you lose an option, the next trade's value will be multiplied by this factor. For instance, if you had 2 here, and your initial option value was 10, and you lost the first option, then the next option value would be 20. In the next setting, you may set a maximum option value to limit the risk on the Martingale function. Also on the next option, you may enable or disable simultaneous trading. If this is enabled, the EA can enter trades even when there are existing options that are not yet expired. Finally, you get two added filters you can use to filter out bad signals of your indicator. One is the ranging market filter. If this is enabled, then any signals generated by your indicator during a ranging market will not be executed. Ranging market identification will be based on an internal algorithm of the EA. Then you also have the option to filter your indicator signal based on an EMA line. For instance, if you enable this and set EMA as 200, and then if you get a buy signal when the price is below EMA 200, the signal will not be executed. Okay. Now we have a brief understanding of the settings. Now it's high time we did some actual options trading. First, let's try a manual trade. Make sure you have selected the manual mode in the first setting. Also, make sure you set the required option value and expiration in minutes. And finally, make sure you have loaded the EA to the pair you want to trade. Let's have the default options values and try to buy an option with the on-screen buttons. Just click on the rise or fall as necessary. For this example, let's enter a rise option on this volatile 10 index. After clicking on the rise button, you will notice that an arrow is drawn on the chart. Also, on the connector, you get a message that the trade was successful. Then you can also go to Dariv and see if the trade is shown under the option positions. You can see that our trade is actually executed on Dariv with the set expiration. Similarly, you can use these buttons to enter option trades. Also, you can use the check balance button to update the balance. On the left bottom corner, you will get a summary dashboard with key information on your account. Now, let's see how you could trade automatically using a buffer-based indicator. We are using an arrow indicator called Super Arrow Indicator. What we want is to trade rise or fall options automatically as per the arrow signal. Let's look at the indicator buffer or color IDs. The color IDs usually start with zero even if they are not mentioned. So in our case, buy arrow is zero and sell arrow is one. Now open the EA settings. First change the trading mode to buffer-based indicator. Then add the indicator name. It is advisable to copy the name from the indicator file itself to avoid any typos. Please note, if your indicator is not located directly under the indicator's folder, then you will have to provide the folder path. For instance, if the indicator is located under a subfolder called Market, then the indicator name should be like this. Then simply update the buffer numbers we recognized before, 0 for buy and 1 for sell. In this indicator, the arrow appears on the previously completed candle, so the candle ID to watch is 1. However, for instance, if the arrow appears under the current forming candle itself, then you can set this as 0. Similarly, if the arrow appears later than the last completed candle, you may increase this ID as necessary. 
Then simply set the option value, expiration time, and other options as necessary. Now the EA is set up to trade based on the indicator arrows. When the buy arrow appears, EA will enter the rise options on Derive, and when sell arrow appears, EA will enter the fall options on Derive. Now, let's see how you can automate an object-based indicator that has no color IDs or buffers. Let's look at this indicator. It also has arrows, but there are no color IDs. If you look at the objects, you can see that these arrows are objects created by the indicator. Let's automate this object. We want to enter the trade when the arrow appears. First, go to EA Settings and select Object-Based Indicator Mode. Then you need to identify a prefix of the object name that is common to both buy and sell arrows. In this case, PZTD can be used as the prefix. Then you need to add the respective colors for the buy and sell objects. You will see that buy object color is Dodger Blue, while sell object color is Red, which you need to update under Settings. If the object has more than one time value under the parameters, you may need to adjust the next setting accordingly. For instance, if your object has three time values under parameters, then you need to select object time three. Since our arrow object has only one time value, you can leave the default settings. Please refer to the user manual for more on this. Then simply set the option value, expiration, and other necessary inputs. Now we have set up the EA for this indicator, and the EA should make trades on Derive when signal appears. So that's it guys. Please make sure you test our free demo before purchasing. If you've got questions or need help, drop a comment. I'll be hanging out down there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.